now. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Paul Combination, and I'm serving as the Associate Dean for Graduate and Interdisciplinary Affairs. Um, so what that means is a lot of our new programs, I work on helping them get developed and help getting them fielded. And what I wanted to talk to you today about is a new program we're starting. Um, this actually, the thought for this actually started about four years ago. Uh, we were approached by several of the companies in the area who deal particularly in the energy industry. And what they were mentioning is that they can find engineers who can help them with specific energy generation projects. So for example, petroleum engineers, mining engineers, mechanical, electrical, where they were having problems is finding engineers who had more of a global perspective on energy. Uh, folks who maybe weren't necessarily a complete expert on oil or solar or wind, uh, but they had a general understanding of how all these different energy sources could be folded together so a company could be very effective in bringing a wide range of energy sources together for companies and for people. This was a little bit different because we're used to turning out regular engineering degrees. Uh, if a student comes to me now and says, I don't know what I want to do in life, but I want to be an engineer, a lot of times I'll say, well, if you if you want as many options as possible, pick one of the traditional engineering fields, such as mechanical, electrical, of course, my department, industrial. Um, if you want to get a little bit more specialized, you might pick some other fields, uh, such as civil engineering or our bioengineering or material science. But this has gone even farther than that. We have found that there are energy or, or specific programs in engineering all across the country that deal in very specific areas. Uh, we know about aerospace. That's sort of a very narrow defined, very targeted degree. There's also mining engineering. Um, a little while ago, I learned that at Louisiana they, uh, Tech, they used to have a program in sugar engineering, which eventually converted to chemical engineering. Uh, we've got programs in ceramic engineering, wind energy, um, quite quite a portfolio out there. But what these companies asked for is they said, look, in, in Texas, we are a traditional fossil fuel state. As a matter of fact, for those of you who don't know, Texas generates more energy than any other state in the union. By the way, we also use more energy than anybody else in the union. And I've had people come in and say, well, that doesn't make sense. What about California? Well, that's true but all the oil refineries we have down along the coast chew up an incredible amount of power. So we produce the most and we use the most. And what these companies said is, look, we know at gas and, and oil, uh, to some degree coal is gonna be with us for a while. We wanna get away from that, but it's not gonna happen right away. So what they wanted is an engineer who actually could understand a range of different sources. Uh, not specialized in any one of them. So what I wanted to do is uh, go through, I'm gonna go through just a couple slides and sh give you a little bit of the background on the program and what it looks like uh, and why we developed it. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll answer questions. Um, I've got some that have come in and if you have a question, feel free to post it in the chat. Now, while I'm showing you the slides, uh, I won't be able to actually see that chat uh, but as soon as I'm done with the slides, I'll take a look at that and go ahead and answer those questions for you. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our PowerPoint slides. And don't worry, there's only a few slides. I know sometimes you get in something and, and down in the corner you see one of 200. Um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> OK, you're live with your slides. All right, thank you. So we actually had quite a discussion on what we were going to call this program. Um, and what we settled on is this is a Bachelor of Science in Resource and Energy Engineering. It's a multidisciplinary program, so it draws courses from a lot of different departments. Originally, I was hosting it and doing the paperwork to, to get the program put together and approved. Um, since that point, we've decided that the best spot to put this is in electrical engineering. They have the capacity and are able to cover a lot of the upper level courses in it. Um, so in fall of 
2023, this program will go live um, and you'll be able to go uh, even shortly in a few weeks, you'll be able to go to the Apply Texas website and uh, apply directly to this program as a new student. They also are updating and putting information on the website. My understanding is that'll be up within a couple of weeks also. So by mid-November, the website will be up so you can learn more about the program. OK, so this is actually the first program of its type in the country. And I did have somebody pointed out and said, well, Stanford has a program like this. Well, yes, they do. But in Stanford's, you take some core basic courses and then you specialize. So you can get your energy engineering at Stanford and specialize in wind energy. Or you could specialize in solar or even uh, petroleum. But our program is a little bit different. What they were asking us for is engineers, a well-trained, well-developed engineer whose primary focus is designing, developing, and operating energy generation, storage, conversion, and distribution systems. So you can see a person with this degree working for perhaps Encore Power, and their job is to find, identify, and mesh effectively all these different energy sources um, and be able to get the power from the different sources, store it effectively, get it distributed to homes and businesses, uh, and do it all in such a way that a company actually is profitable because that's the objective of industry. So you can see it's much more of a global degree program. Now you notice on my pictures here, I've got the the traditional oil rig in Texas and also wind. And you, and you may not realize it, but Texas is one of the leading producers of wind energy in the country. Uh, out in West Texas, we have quite a few um, farms, uh, wind farms that uh, generate a, a good bit of energy and that area is growing. Now, of course, there's always that debate about, hey, what happens if the wind stops? You know, do your light bulbs go out or if I'm using solar, what happens if the sun isn't shining? You know, how do you have power at night? Well, that's what we're trying to train engineers to deal with. You know, how do you generate the energy? How do you store it? Um, and how do you draw on different sources of energy so that you're able to provide reliable economical power to everybody? So this is the course configuration. And if you look at these, you'll see they don't do a quote deep dive in one area. They try to be very broad. So and we also have it set up so you're going to get these courses even as you start the program in your first year. Of course, all the programs have an intro course. Uh, this program will 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 spend a good bit of time on the chemistry of fuels because many of these um, energy sources require a good bit of chemistry to understand. Uh, even the transportation of, of uh, energy requires an understanding of, of chemistry. There's courses on thermal engineering, uh, principles of energy engineering, and then two specialized courses, one of them specializing in sustainable energy systems. So this will be talking about um, different programs on, on how you use solar, how you use geothermal, nuclear, wind, and that's coupled with a traditional course on petroleum and gas engineering. And again, I know there's a lot of debate. People say, hey, we have to get away from fossil fuels. And there's general agreement on that in most of the engineering community, but we really don't have the capability to do that quickly. It's gonna be an evolution. And so we know petroleum and gas is going to be with us for a while. Now, what's unique on this program is we're really, really interested in understanding how you combine all this together. And so we have two additional courses, one of them on data analytics and visualization of energy systems. Uh, for those of you who might be familiar with data science, you'll recognize a lot of the tools in this course because generating, distributing, and managing energy is an incredibly uh, data intensive process. And we want you to be able to deal with that data and make good decisions. The other one we have is more of a little bit more traditional modeling course. This is energy systems modeling, and this uses a lot of the the traditional math modeling, operations research, and com computer simulation models. Again, so you've got the analytical skills to help companies make good business decisions on how they handle their energy. There's also a course on smart grids because we're finding that how we control power is much more than just dump 
power into the lines and let the lines send the power like water wherever it needs to go. Managing an electrical grid is a very complex process. We also have a course on management of energy projects because one of the things we find is a lot of engineers as they move in their career move into management positions even fairly early. So we want you to have a background on that. And then the biggest issue, particularly with renewables, is how do you store power? Um, if any of you are any, on any of the social media, you always see these ads and things pop up for you know solar panels and, uh, and electric uh, energy storage. Uh, I know Tesla's got some things you can get to store energy in your house so you can be more energy efficient. You know, so that's what that course is covered. And then the last one, which is a little bit unique, is the idea that um, public perception, government policy, culture, um, all these things influence how we use energy. And so we want you to have some experience in that. So there's the final course is energy governance, which is looking at all these, for lack of a better term, non-engineering functions. Uh, what happens when you have tax incentives? Uh, what happens when you have industrial zones to promote this? What happens when the federal government invests additional money in chip technology or solar panels? All these things dramatically change the industry and dramatically change how desirable a particular type of energy is. And we want you to have that type of background. Now I'll go through quickly. Um, this is actually evolving, but we did map through the four years of the program. It is 124 credits, so it's comparable to other programs. If you are uh, have a, a good math and science background and you start this program, uh, you have the potential of finishing it in four years. I know a lot of engineering programs, students tend to take longer because of internships or sometimes they need some extra math courses to help get them up to speed. Uh, but the program is set up so that you can go through it in, in four years and have your summers free for internships. I will highlight on this um, that in this version of it, we actually had two intro courses into resource and energy engineering. They both occurred in the second semester. We've since changed that so that actually your first semester when you join the program, you're immediately going to get in with your peers and having courses in your focus area. This is the last two years and I want to highlight one particular item on this. We do recognize that students have a lot of special interests, things that they want to do. So in this program, we've actually built in three open technical electives, one in the junior year and two in the senior year. And we've gone through with different departments to help identify areas of specialization. So for example, um, in Texas, one of the things in resources we're very interested in is water. So we're working with the civil engineering program so that students can take a three credit, three course sequence in sustainability and water. There's also programs in sustainability. Um, we already at the university have a nuclear engineering program, and so that will be folded in here, as well as other programs that different departments have. We also have uh, another one we're putting in on entrepreneurship too. So the idea is when you finish your degree, you'll have not only the degree in resource and energy engineering, you'll also have a focus area um, if you wish so that you can target a particular area that's to your interest. Now I'm going to mention this is a bachelor's program currently. There is our plans to roll out a master's program in this once this is fielded. One of the things we've also done is we're structuring this in such a way that you'll be able to, on finishing this, go into other programs to get your master's degree. So for example, you could evolve from this and go into electrical engineering graduate um, master's programs, uh, material science, and some of the students select industrial engineering and take the engineering management option. So for those of you who are looking at thinking about graduate degrees, this will be designed to handle that also. And by the way, some folks are always wondering, well, is this an accredited program since it's so new? And the answer is yes. Our accrediting agency for all of our engineering programs is ABET, and this program is targeted to be reviewed and accredited uh, for ABET under the general engineering guidelines. And by the way, just so you know it, ABET will not accredit your program until you have your first graduates. Um, so the program will run and be working on the, the uh, 
approval for ABET, you know, as we're rolling it out. So everybody asks, well, why should I do this? We did a review, and this is over 2018 to 2021, into the pandemic, by the way. And what they found is, if you look for jobs that are in the energy engineering field, what they find is there are a lot of job postings. The average number of jobs across the United States is 10,111. Uh, it increases every single month. There are more and more postings. Um, and actually from March 2020 to February 2021, uh, at that time frame, that window there, there were actually 41,452 new job postings. So even without this degree, the energy in industry is looking for people with the backgrounds to help them. This is a growth area. Now, of course, the question is, if you don't have this type of degree, where are they actually hiring people? Uh, and this is a study that was completed in February of 21, looking at the United States. They also looked at Canada too, and the results are fairly similar. Uh, but what they found is people working in the field, how did they list their primary skills? Uh, and you see in here, one of the things they had was a large number of people from electrical engineering, environmental, mechanical. Um, I'm highlighting those because the program we built actually draws a lot of courses out of our mechanical program and our electrical because we found that's where people who are in the field now, this is where they tend to um, be drawn from currently. Now, of course, near the bottom there, you see energy engineers. Well, the reason that's so low is there are almost no energy engineering programs in the country, so you can't hire people with that background even if you want to because they don't exist. Currently, they don't exist. And of course, another thing is, well, what skills do I need if I work here? And of course, as any engineer, you've got to understand design processes. Uh, and you notice there's a um, good emphasis on electrical engineering and electrical power systems. Again, we've built that into the program. And if you notice some of the other items down here, project management, that's why we put a project management course in there. Uh, we have mechanical engineering courses. There actually are some options for environmental tech electives too. And notice, notice down there, we talk about business development. Um, and again, that's why we have that project management course. So we tried to look at what do people in this field do for a living and make sure that those particular skills are there. Our goal is that you have a job at graduation and then when you start work at the company, you don't need two years of training before you're effective. We want you to basically graduate on Saturday and be ready to work on Monday. OK, you might want some time off. That's OK. But uh, when you start work at the company, you'll be ready to go and have the skills you need to start immediately. Another question came up is why are you starting with a bachelor's degree? Um, master's degrees are much easier to start off with. And again, when we re looked at the literature, we found that by far what companies are looking for is people with bachelor's degrees who are new graduates and are ready to go to work. So that's why we focused on a bachelor's program to begin with. OK, I'm going to go ahead and go out of this. Once I get my cursor in the right place. And we'll go back live. OK, I'm going to take a couple questions that I've gotten. And so the first one is uh, who can go into this program? If you're eligible for any engineering program and you have the math and science background, you would be eligible for this program. Um, so skills you definitely need are a good, comfortable background in math and science. Um, if you're a little weaker in math, which is not uncommon, you can still come into the program and you may have to take some refresher courses before you get into the calculus sequence. Um, let's see another question. OK, what if I finish the program and don't go to want to go to work for a power company? Good question. You always want options because when you graduate, you don't know what's going to happen in industry. So when we built this program, it has a very strong basic uh, education in fundamental engineering. 
So you will take all the basic fundamentals out of mechanical engineering, statics, dynamics. You'll take uh, materials courses. You'll take electrical circuits. You basically are able to market yourself as a very solid, well-rounded engineer. So while your primary job source you're looking for is something related in the energy industry, you're going to have the background to be able to go and work in many different fields. And by the way, that is important because surveys have showed that the average engineer changes their job, not necessarily the company, but they change jobs about every 18 months. Um, when we talk about engineers now, an average engineer over a 40, 50 year career may completely change where they're working four or five times. Uh, and we're talking about complete industry changes. So we want you to have a bachelor's degree that is suitable for that type of career. See, I think I've got one more here. Okay, who can apply? So the immediately starting, the program is open to new incoming freshmen and transfer students who have less than 24 credits. Uh, we're doing that because we're developing the courses as it's being fielded. Uh, by probably the second to third year of the program, it'll be open to all transfer students. And it is also open to all uh, US students and all international students also. Okay. Oh, one other question. Um, this does include a capstone course, and what a capstone course is, is an applied industry-based course, so you get work experience as part of your educational curriculum. Now, here at UTA, many of our students also do internships. As a matter of fact, that's very prevalent, um, so you're able to do that, and we encourage that and support it. Uh, a lot of those internships are over the summer, between your sophomore and junior year and between your junior and senior year. The capstone course is in addition to that. So during your senior year, you'll again have an opportunity to go work with industry. So when you go graduate and are looking for jobs, we want you at a minimum to have worked in industry for one semester. And hopefully you'll be able to pick up internships also because that's one of the main things company are looking for. Again, they want to be able to watch you graduate on Saturday. Uh, and have you start work immediately on Monday. OK, are there any other questions? Oh, I think there was one that said, will the course curriculum be the same for international students? Oh, good question. Yes, the basic curriculum is the same for uh, US, for international, for transfer students. It's all the same. You do have the option of customizing on the technical electives, but the requirements are identical. We have another question. Does this program form part of the STEM programs? Yes, very good. Particularly for international students, we know a STEM designate is important, and this is a classified as a STEM program. That is all the questions we have at this moment. OK, and I don't have any from this end either, so I'll go ahead and close off with a, a couple comments. We are really excited about this program, and so is the administration here at the university. So um, it's not often you stand up a completely new bachelor's program. We've had a, a really surprising amount of interest, even though we haven't been marketing it yet. Um, I think people realize that this type of education is going to become even more critical in the future. At the beginning, uh, I had my email and I was going to mention at the College of Engineering website. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have more questions. You can also contact uh, Dr. Diane Huffaker. Uh, she is the chair of electrical engineering and has taken over uh, all the prep work so that we'll be ready to launch next fall. Thank you for watching. Uh, wish you the best of success and hope to see you at UTA.